In this video, I want to show you how you can use organization apps to distribute your reports within the Power BI service to your users. We're going to look at what it is on a basic level, what it's for, and cover some of the new features that have come out in the recent months with org apps. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So within the Power BI service, this is where you publish your reports from desktop to the web. There are multiple ways that you can share your reports. You can either create a link by clicking the share button on the top of your reports, which will let you generate a link to either allow users to have access to this report as a viewer or someone who can build on top of your data sets, or you can also also give them access directly to the workspace where you've published that report. So that way they have access to all of the items, multiple reports, dashboards within that same workspace. An organization app or org app allows you to bundle up all of these items into a single place that you can then use to distribute to your users. Now at this point, it probably sounds a little bit unnecessary because as I mentioned, you could already do that with the workspace. But let me show you some of the examples of when you would want to be using org app. So here we are in my Power BI service, which is where I store all of my Power BI reports and other kind of artifacts. Within this service, I have multiple workspaces, which I use to organize these reports based on what they do. So I'm going to open one of these. So this one is my challenges workspace, which is where I publish all of the reports that I have used for multiple challenges. And as you can see, there are a couple different items here. So we have a few reports. And if you wanted to give your users access to all of these reports, as I mentioned, you can just simply create and manage their access by clicking in this button, which will allow you to add more people to this workspace, which will which you can then control to say, for example, if they have viewer access, they'll be able to just open the reports. I mean, I did cover this in a different video already, so we're not going to go through too much about that. So this is probably going to be your first instinct when it comes to sharing access to other people like clients or other developers. But there are a couple of different problems that arise from this method. First is that when you give them access to this workspace, it means that they will have full access to everything within this work, workspace, which at the moment, I guess is fine because there's only reports and data sets there. But even still for your users or clients, they would not be too interested in seeing or having access to the data sets since they would only be interested in the reports. But if you imagine this workspace being a little bit bigger, that means they will have access to any other artifacts within this uh, workspace. It might be a data flow, or a dashboard that they shouldn't have access to. And having all of these items that are not really relevant to your clients uh, can cause confusion. Even with this current setup that we have here, where we just have reports and data sets, it's not so easy to tell which is a report and which is a data set and what is the difference is. It's not something that your users would be very familiar with when they open this workspace. The second thing is when it comes to working with uh, multiple developers. So let's say we're working on a new prototype of a report and I want to be able to share this across my different team members. And this is the primary reason for a workspace, which means that we need to publish this in this workspace. However, if we've given our clients access to this workspace as well, they would be able to see those test changes that we are still working on, which we don't really want to do. We want to have this separation of having the published version, which is the sort of correct version that we show to our clients. But we also want to have a collaboration space with our other developers. So creating an organization app solves both of these problems. And it's actually super easy to do. So let me show you how to create one from this workspace. So from here, as you can see, there is a button here in this workspace called create app. If we click that button, it will start the wizard, which will, will create the, um, uh, the app for our workspace. So from here, we're going to just type a description here, a list of reports for data challenges. And you'll see that there are a few things already here, uh, app color, some settings. We're not going to go too much into them uh, right now, but we'll come back to them a bit later. We'll go to the next page, which is the content. So this is where we will add our reports and any other items that we want to show to our clients. So if we click just the add content here, it will just give us a few options in which we can add our 
reports. So we have just the few reports. So we're going to add, let's just add all of them for now. Let's hit add here. As you can see, it's created us a three different uh, pages here that you can flick through. And as you click them, it just flicks through to the next uh, report without having to leave uh, this uh, this view. And this is what we want for our clients. You can organize them how you want, rearrange them. You can double click to rename them if you wanted to. And you can add other things like adding uh, an external link if you wanted to, let's say, create an FAQ page. Or you can create sections. So the sections allow you to create groupings so that uh, you, you can collapse or expand uh, this list of reports if you have a lot of them. We're not going to go too much into how to organize these because, because that's not really the point, but you can organize this if you wanted to. So next is the audience. Now we'll come back to this later because this is one of the new features that have come out in the recent months. But for now, we're going to say let's, but for now, the most important thing to know is that you can control who has access to this organization app. You might want to give access to specific users within your company, or you can give access to this to your entire organization, which means that they'll be able to find it uh, when they're searching for uh, more data in Power BI Service, which I'll also show you in a second. For now, we're going to hit Publish App and finish up the process. So and that's pretty much your organization app done. So let's go to the app and see what we've done. So here is the organization app that we've created for the challenges workspace. As you can see, it's adapted the color that we have set it, the color scheme, which you can update to whatever color you have. You can navigate through the different reports, separate reports by using this navigation bar on the left hand side. So if you wanted your clients to have access to this org app, all you need to do is uh, make sure that they have access to the reports by setting it up on the org app, manage access here, and you can add a user or you can just add it when you're updating the app later. So if you go back to the workspace again, if you click update app, you will have the ability to go back to this view where you have the audiences where you can add these users. Once you've added them, you can simply just copy the link that the app generates for you. So if I just hit update here, you can just simply share them this link, uh, which will take them directly to the org app. So as you notice, there are a couple of things that this organization app already has sold for us. The first thing is this, this separation of the published items to the items that are in the workspace, because in the org apps, you can choose what you want to share to your clients. You can choose not to share the items that let's say are on test or that you not might not want to be client facing already. You can kind of cherry pick that and show the ones that you want to show in the org app. So any reports that you published in the organization app doesn't change when the reports within the workspace change. So if I updated one of the reports in my workspace right now, the challenges workspace, it won't update on the org app version until I hit update app. So for example, let's say I made a change on the iPhone reviews report. If I make that change, that won't apply to the org app until I hit the update app. Now the org apps will still continue to update data if you set it to refresh on a regular basis, but any changes that you make to the model or the design won't update until you hit update app. So this separation creates this client facing view that your clients can see. And at the same time, having this benefit of this collaboration space where you can still work with your other developers without having to show it to your clients. So let's go back to the this part where we are updating the organization app. And from the content page, we've already covered the sort of the new section where you can organize your reports. But as you noticed, when I hit add content, although it's just giving me reports at the moment, because we only have reports in this workspace, it also means that you can add other RBA artifacts here. So if you imagine the possibilities by adding scorecards, adding dashboards. So this allows you to create a sort of narrative experience for your clients all within this one page for them to explore. Having this one place for them to explore also means that you don't need to keep resharing links for multiple reports as you build them. So let's say we want to add more items into this reporting suite that we're creating for them. Instead of giving them new access to these reports, we can simply just keep adding them into this org app. And as soon as we push them, everyone that needs to see them will be able to use them within the same organization app 
link. So this is not actually my first time covering the organization app. I think I covered it a few years back. And since then, they've made this new updates with the org app called the audiences. So audiences basically lets you control which reports a group of audience has access to within your organization app. So the idea of this is similar to role level security, if you know how this works. But instead of limiting the role level access, we kind of control it on a sort of page level access. So let me show you. So let's go back to the audience uh, section here. And here on the top, you can see that you have your default view challenges. And there is this plus button where you can add a new audience. So if we click that, for example, it, uh, it just lets you add multiple audiences, you can rename this into something else. I mean, audiences, think of them as groups of people who you want to have a certain level of access to your org app. So let's say we want finance people to have access to certain reports within our org app, but not everything. So for this finance audience, we can control what reports they should be able to see by simply toggling the visibility of our reports here. So let's say for finance, it doesn't really make any sense at the moment, but I'm just going to hide everything except the iPhone reviews report. So anyone you assign to this audience group will only be able to see this iPhone reviews report, even though there are multiple reports already within this app. To assign audience to assign people to these audiences, you simply just go here. So as you are in this finance tab, you control who belongs into this audience. So you can type their names here, which it should sort of auto populate. So anytime they open the org app, they will have these filters applied to them. So as you can see, this is super handy, especially when it comes to managing access to certain parts of the organization app without having to recreate all of that work. So you can keep all of your work in this one place and just manage the audiences and access if you need to. So lastly, let's talk about sharing and distributing. As I mentioned, when you click update app, it will generate a URL which you can use to distribute to your clients, which they can then use to access the organization app. However, they can also, at least for those who have access to the org app, they are able to find this by themselves within the Power BI service. So if we go back to home here for users who have used Parse Power BI service for the first time, this page will probably be empty. So from here, if they go to apps, so here we have already a few of the apps that I've already published and that I have access to that is installed in my service. However, if if someone has access to an org app and they don't have it yet, they can do so by clicking get apps here and under organization apps, it should show up here if it is available. So they will be able to kind of pull that and just have access to it from here. And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with how you can use organization apps to start distributing your reports and other Power BI artifacts within the Power BI service. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comments comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.